You know the drill. Are we that stale already? Never say die. That's especially true in today's St. Rose Fireside Chats. I'm Zach. I'm Ted. And I'm Tanner. Tonight on the chat, monsters. Alien life. And ghosts. Alright, so monsters. Zach, darling, what would you say your favorite type of monster is? Um, I'd probably have to say that my favorite monster is the monster from Cloverfield. He is just ridiculously brutal. Um, and he births more monsters that are actually more brutal than that. Uh, when they bite you, they basically make you blow up. Like, actually blow up. Does it go straight to my thighs first, or do I just blow up right on the spine? No, it's actually uh, your chest region. So... That that's pretty monstrous. Yeah, it's yeah, that's, that's some like alien movie type of thing with yeah. the chest bursters, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, the classics. That that Cloverfield movie actually had like an interesting uh, symbol of the Statue of Liberty, its head being yeah. thrown through New York. Yep. It's pretty good. Got to admit, you got to give it to the yeah. the director. Good of that CGI. Movie. Yeah. Good we'll CGI. CGI. Yeah. What about you, Tanner? What's your favorite type of monster? My favorite monster has got to be Godzilla. I gotta say, he's just this giant hulking tank of a monster who can just breathe fire or nuclear energy, depending which one you're talking about. But I also gotta say, his villains are cool too. You Mothra know, like, did nothing wrong. Mothra did nothing wrong. King Ghidorah is really cool. Even Mechagodzilla, who's not really a monster because he's a robot, but he's a robot monster, so it's okay. I would say <laughs> it's so. <a> monster. <laughs> it's a monster. <laughs> you know what? I'd say so. Science is evil. That's what I'm saying. Science is evil. Exactly. <laughs> All you science majors, shame. <laughs> You're monsters. Shame. <laughs> you are monsters. <sighs> what about shame. you, Ted? Tanner What's your favorite monster? Extreme. Um, it's a bit hard for me to pinpoint my favorite monster. I'm a big fan of like the cartoonish, funny-looking monsters from the uh, Pokemon, literally the Pocket Monster series, and also the Dragon Quest series, because those two, those two video game series kind of really define my childhood, because I always just found it... Pretty hilarious how like these cute little critters can just like stab and like shock people with all like these godlike powers while like just being like all cute looking. I, I always thought that was <laughs> that was pretty funny to me. If I did have to pinpoint like my favorite monster out of the two series, I'd probably say the mascot for Dragon Quest. It's the little slime guy. Cause no matter what the situation is, through thick or thin, he always has that dumb smile on his face. And it just it really brightens your day, especially when he's setting you on fire. Just like Wooper from Pokemon. The armless, <laughs> smiling, <laughs> uh, uh, pre-evolution to Wobbuffet. Things could be worse. Gotta I'm say, happy. he's, he's Wobba so Wobba. happy to have no arms. <laughs> he is so happy. It's great. <laughs> oh, it's just adorable. So moving on to our next topic, alien life. Tanner, I'm going to start with you. Do you think aliens are out there? I gotta say, yeah, just on probability alone. I don't, we don't really have too much hard evidence here, but it's, it's, you look at the amount of galaxies that there are, and there's gotta be something out there other than us, you know? Zach, I sense that spark in your eye. What do you think about aliens? Do you think we're alone? <laughs> uh, we're definitely not alone. Um, as Tanner was saying, there's such a high chance that there's, like, an Earth just like ours, um, or a planet just like ours, and that's close enough and just as far enough from the star that they're probably around, you know, that life could most likely form on that. And, like, you also have to think that there's more galaxies that are being created and then we're also expanding as a universe. And um, a long time ago, I actually did a research on it, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was, like, something like there are 10 to, like, the 30 galaxies out there. So that's... A 10 with 30 zeros behind it. That's unreal. So, <laughs> And the number just keeps getting bigger, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's just getting bigger. So, uh, yeah. I remember a short while ago, um, this is just my take on alien life. I remember I had read this theory called the Fermi Paradox, where just as the universe is expanding and our technology is increasing, we just can't seem to find that middle ground where we can really positively determine whether or not we're alone out there. Personally, just... I do believe that there is life out there. I think it's a bit egotistical to just assume that we're alone in the universe, especially if it's still expanding. 
But uh, there's a theory that there are three types of civilizations, type one, type two, and type three. If you're type one, which is what we're almost up to, you can harness all the energy that your, uh, that your planet provides. At type two, you can harness the power of your uh, galaxy sun. And we're probably a few thousand, maybe a million years away from that. Uh, and then type three is pretty much you're like the emperor of the galaxy. So there is a chance there could be some emperor alien overwatching us like we're animals in a zoo. Star but, Wars. Yeah, essentially Star Wars. <laughs> But there's also, this is my own little personal theory, there might be alien life out there that is like uh, its own little civilization, but they might just be, to put it blunt, they might just be dumber than us, and they might just not have the technology yet to really uh, think or just experiment with the uh, notion that there might be life beyond their stars. That is an interesting thing to think about. We normally think about aliens coming here and being more intelligent than us, but what if they're dumber than us? Yeah, and they yeah. just haven't found us yet because they can't. <laughs> Maybe we'll find them first. Yeah. Maybe. Manifest Destiny, Space Edition. Oh, no. <laughs> We're getting into that point of the, the fireside chat. <laughs> well, so, uh, I guess with other things that we don't know solely if they exist or not, we should move on to ghosts. Oh, uh, yeah. Personally, I got to go with I think ghosts do exist and because of the amount of um, children's dolls that seem to be inhabited by them and creepy buildings that people just die in a lot. It's pretty negative. I've never really heard a ghost story that's really positive. So, Casper, though. I don't, Casper, though. Yeah, but that's fictional. It's still negative. You know, so, it's alive in my heart. Yeah. What do you think, Zach? Uh, I don't know. I mean, to a certain extent, I can believe, but at the same time, I just feel like they're just so, you know, transparent that it's almost like, how can you believe in them, I guess? I don't know. They're just like not, they're technically not there, but they're there. Yeah, like there's no like physical, visual evidence you can look at just yet to be like, yep, they're definitely there. But it's just like yeah. the superstition you feel inside of yourself, it's like, there's, there might be something. Yeah, like if you're in a pictures. room by yourself, pictures. you feel like somebody's looking at you. Maybe that's a ghost that's looking at you. You can just feel it. Mm -hmm. Who knows? That's six cents in action. There you go. I'd like to believe in them. Yeah. Just because I like to think that something's there, but, you know. That's more flavor to life, you know? Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, personally, the only ghost I believe in is the Holy Ghost. Um, <laughs> but to kind of plead the, uh, the case for ghosts existing, there has also been uh, a few theories on that as well. Uh, there's one theory that when someone passes on, they can still have an influence on the mortal plane through electricity currents. And I thought that's very interesting, that you can kind of solve your unfinished business through electronics. Uh, but then it also raises the point, are ghosts inherently tormented if they're real, or do they just have unfinished business? Um, personally, if ghosts are real, I think it can be kind of a mix of both. To kind of throw back to the alien subject, perhaps ghosts are just our third dimensional way of interpreting higher dimensional beings. And if there are higher dimensional beings, that's the closest we have to ghosts. And that might just be their way of communicating with us, but we're just immediately uh, labeling them as spooky or unnatural. So what you're saying is they're alien ghosts. Yep, and you know what? Okay. Alien ghosts, so let's I talk don't care about what aliens. you want. Let's talk about <laughs> alien ghosts this time. Maybe we'll make a full circle to monsters. Who knows? Ooh, are ghosts monsters? Would or you classify them ghosts? as monsters to full circle it? You know what? That really isn't my call, but I know one thing. Whether you're a monster or an alien or a ghost, you're not coming from my livestock. That's my job. <laughs> oh. Okay. Wow. Didn't see that coming. I didn't see that either. Well. Wow. <laughs> so that really wraps up today's San Rose Fireside Chat. Um, Zach? Aren't you just, all, just a smidge more grateful to be alive, everyone? Uh, I know I am. Is, life is a highway. Definitely. It has multiple, multiple paths you got to go on, you know? Yeah, is death the easy pass? I can ride it is all night Is death the easy pass? Wow. That's, that's, that's really quite the philosophical. It's philosophical? Right. Right. Philosophy, philosophy question. Life's all about second chances. Man, life's hard, isn't it? It is. <laughs> all right, well, be sure to uh, tune in for the next episode and let us know what topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show. Uh, until then, thank you for joining in on episode three of St. Rose Fireside Chats. Go vote or go home. Doodles.